part 13 of doers of the world thank you daddy number one fight a good fight life is warfare from cradle to grave you may want to write it down life is warfare from cradle to grave from the day you are born to the day you say farewell to this world you are in battle don't let anybody deceive you you are in serious battle from day one to the last day that's why the child enters the world doing what crying say ah where have i found myself the child all of a sudden discovers this place is not as good as my mother's womb. Maybe I should go back into the mother's womb. But it's too late. You are already at war. I pray for you. You will not lose this battle in Jesus' name. You are at war with your flesh. You may want to write that down. One of the biggest battles you will fight in your life is with yourself. Because we have two parts in us that don't like each other. Inside every one of us, there are two parts that don't like each other. Galatians chapter 5 verse 17 says, The flesh is always fighting the spirit. And the spirit is always fighting the flesh. Therefore, the things you wish to do, you find yourself not doing it. Like you will say, Pastor, I swear I will never tell a lie again. Before next Sunday, what will have happened? At the beginning of each year, you make a resolution. This year, God, I will serve you more than ever before. Before January is over, you are back to your usual self. Nothing in you has changed. Because you are at war within yourself. And the one who are successful in life is the one who have mastered in making sure the spirit prevails over the flesh. The greatest battle you will fight is with yourself. And a lot of people that didn't make it as Christians, they lost the battle with self. I pray for somebody here. You will not lose the battle within. The second battle is what you see in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. The battle with adversaries. I was ministering at the church yesterday, and the Holy Spirit reminded us all as I was preaching that the people who want you to fail are always more than the people who want you to succeed. I don't know if you know that. Don't be carried away by the people who are smiling at you. It's a lie. Don't be carried away by the people who are hugging you. It's a lie. The people who want you to fail are always more than the people who want you to succeed. So you are fighting another battle with the adversaries. And 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9 says, a great door, a great and effectual door is open unto me, but many are the adversaries. That's what that passage says. That God wants to bless me. And God has opened the door of blessing unto me. But the enemies are, are many. Look at your neighbor and say, no matter how many they are, your enemies will fail. See, each time you pray for promotion, get ready. But as you are praying for that promotion, the enemies are gathering. They are gathering. Jesus was not even born before they started gathering. 
He said, just tell me where they will have that child. I just want to come and say hello. The young boy was just not even born. And the enemies are already gathering. That's why Apostle Paul said, I fought a good fight. They gathered. They troubled me. I fought myself. But I'm going home knowing that I did not lose. I pray for somebody here as well. You will not lose the battle of life. And then finally on this point number one. Be sober. Don't get carried away. The one that fights and does not lose is the one that has shined his eyes. And you are not carried away by successes of life. You are not carried away by all of a sudden you are now wealthy. You are not carried away all of a sudden you are now a big man, a big woman. You are not carried away. All of a sudden, you've just won a big contract. Because the moment you lose focus of the spiritual warfare, the enemies will come in and prevail over you. The time that most people fail is a time of celebration. Let me say that again. The time that most people fall is the time of what? the time of celebration, when times are good. When things are good for you, be careful. I pray for you, you will not be a prey for the enemy. Amen. Number two, finish your course. Apostle Paul said, not only did I fight a good fight, I completed my assignment. You are not here to while away time. You are here for an assignment. Look at your neighbor and say, you are here for an assignment. You didn't come here just to make up the number. I told you in 2005, I had to come to my senses. I struggled with myself to the point that I said, okay, God, between you and I, why am I here? What is my purpose on earth? 2005, that 18 years ago. I wanted to know why am I here? Who am I? What am I supposed to do? And then, prayerfully, God revealed it to me. And then I wrote a small article that time in 2005. Who am I? You can go and read it. Who am I? I challenge you yourself to find out who are you and what are you in this world to do. It might be different for you. Success means three things. Number one, holiness. Holiness. Number two, kindness. And number three, excellence. I tell my children, if I can achieve these three, I have fought a good fight. It doesn't matter how much money I have or don't have. If I can go back home to the Lord with my garment clean. If I can go back to the Lord and say everybody that I had opportunity to help, I tried my best for them. If I can go back to the Lord and say I tried to be excellent in everything that I touch, then I have fought a good fight. He says, don't surrender. I don't know who you are. Don't surrender. That's what the Lord says. Don't surrender. The journey is still ahead. It's still far. Don't surrender. Don't say, I am tired of this Christian thing. I am tired. It's not working for me. Don't surrender. Number two, he says, don't grow cold. You, you used to be more fervent for God than, than now. The you in the past was more prayerful. The you in the past was more fervent for God. But all of a sudden, you are growing cold. You are not praying as you used to pray. You are not even fervent in, in church again. And then number three is don't backslide. 
Temptations will come. Don't backslide. Don't backslide. Otherwise, you will not finish your course. You will not finish your course. I don't know who you are, but my prayer for you is that you will not surrender. My prayer for you is that you will not grow cold and you will not backslide. All eyes closed. If you have mentioned your case very briefly, before we get to the end of the sermon, just lift up that hand. I want to pray for you. I don't know what you are going through. If you are also online, you just discover that you are no longer as fervent as you used to be for the Lord. In fact, it appears you have backslided or you have even given up on God. Just lift up that hand. Just lift it up very well. God bless you. God bless you. All eyes closed, please. God bless you. God bless you. The grace to rediscover your passion again. The grace to love God again. The grace to serve God again. The grace to run with all of your strength for God again. Receive in the mighty name of Jesus. Number three, keep the faith. Keep the faith. Apostle Paul said at the end of his own life, I kept the faith. I did not disappoint Jesus. Today, someone is a little bit maybe hard, but, but it's because God is calling you to a higher level. That's why we took that song, Conquerors and Overcomers, now are we. You will overcome in Jesus' name. You will be a conqueror in Jesus' name. So keep the faith. If your faith is tested, they are, they, are, they are trying to push you to lie so that you can make progress in your business. Refuse. It's better for you to be on the same level than to secure promotion by lying. Your faith will be tested. Hello? Refuse. Refuse. No matter how beautiful the promise is, no matter how beautiful the gain may be, how great the gain may be, choose to suffer than to enjoy life in an ungodly way. That's what it means to keep the faith. Now, if it comes to the point where I will either surrender my Christianity to make progress or I remain stagnant, Choose to be stagnant. Let them carry their promotion. If you have to lie to get a contract, choose to remain poor. Let them carry their contract. Is somebody following me? That's what it means to keep the faith. In John chapter 2, I think 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. Let's put it on the screen. I want to read it. I think it's 1 John chapter 2, 15 to 16. Love not the world. Let's read it together. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in. This is not the kind of someone you hear these days because they want to pump you up. But I don't want to pump you up. I want to strengthen you. Love not the world, nor the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in. The more popular you get in this world, most likely the more you are backsliding. Hello? The more people like you in this world, the more likely you have walked away from Christ. So for those of you who are seeking popularity, I want them to like me. 
For them to like you, you have to be like them. And the more you be like them, the more you have surrendered the faith. Verse 16 and 17 tells us the three G's that you must prevail over. Verse 16, for all that is in the world, the loss of the that is the first G. The loss of the highs. The second G. And the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. What are these G's? The G's you must conquer. G number one. Girls. Hello? G number one, girls. David was the friend of God, the man after God's heart. But he failed the first G. And for that reason, for the rest of his life, he operated under a curse. The wisest man in the world failed the first G. The Bible said this man was wise, but was not wise enough to overcome the first G. Solomon ended his life by saying, this life is vanity. It's because you failed, Solomon. Life is not vanity. You failed. When I, whenever I read that passage, I said, no, to you, Solomon, is vanity. To me, it is not. It is vanity to you because you failed, Solomon. You failed. You failed. He failed the first G. Samson failed the first G. Girls are powerful. You will not fail the first G. The second G is gold. The lost of the eyes. Gold. Oh, you want money, you want money, you want money. Be careful. Money is good. But the love of money is what? Is the root of all evil. Money is good. And God wants us to be wealthy. God wants us to be wealthy. But if you don't conquer money, money will conquer you. And the things that you should not do, you will do for the sake of, Pastor, I want to hammer. Hammer now. In the process, you will be hammered. The third G is glory. You want fame. You want position. You want power. The devil said to Jesus, Jesus, see, everything in this world is mine. Everything is mine. Everything. I own it all. If you can just bow down and worship me, I'll give you everything. And Jesus said, be gone, Satan. Be gone, be gone, be gone. Be gone. Be gone, Satan. Be careful about being famous. Be careful about big positions. Be careful. I want to encourage every one of you to keep the faith. Don't sell your crown. Don't do what? Don't sell your crown. Let me try and round up as I go to point number four, which is the heart of today's message. 
And that number four says, thank you, daddy. Thank you, daddy, for keeping the faith. My daddy is the best daddy in the world. Without any doubt, my father, my biological father, I see him as the best father in the world. You know, I've told you many times he couldn't afford my school fees. He, he didn't have enough money to train all of us. But you will discover that there are things that are more important than money. And if not for him, and if not for the life he lived, this man won't be standing before you. When Apostle Paul said, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, that's my father on the screen. He, 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 he didn't have money. I remember when I wanted to go to university and he, he gave me that 20 naira, whatever it is. I, I won't forget. I looked at my father. His singlet was torn. Picture it in your mind. The man had no money to the extent that even the singlet he was wearing was torn. But rather than spend that money to buy singlet for himself, he was willing to give it to me to go to school. And I had to tell him, Father, please keep it. Use it for yourself. Let me survive on my own. I will try my best to survive. Seven things that daddy left with us that are bigger than money. And I want to challenge every one of you to come up higher to this level. You may not have money. You may not have position. But there are things more important in life than money. So my father left us with these seven things. Number one, to be honest. All the years that he lived, not once was there any suggestion of dishonesty. Not once. In fact, people will like to go around him if they want to do anything that is dishonest. They want to make sure the man will not hear about it because he will block it. He was an educated man. Make no mistake. And he was in a position where he could have hammered. He could have been very rich. He was a senior civil servant. You see, when I say this man didn't have the money to send me to school, it was not because he was not educated. A very senior civil servant. But he made up his mind that he will not take bribe and he will not take gifts. I remember, even as a young boy, they would bring gifts to our house. Christmas period, New Year period. Do you know what my father did? He would say, Who brought this gift? Take it and send it. All of us be wondering, this man all right? He did not accept gift from anybody. They will bring bags of rice and all of those things. He sent every one of it back. That he does not want gift from anybody. He doesn't want any gift. So every Christmas we will look, the gift will come, the gift will go back. All of us were very sad. Because if you can't buy all this fine thing, milk and all of that, 
Let us take the one that people are giving. I say, no, 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 no. Take it back. Give it back. We will live within our means. I pray for somebody here. The grace to fight a good fight. The grace to keep the faith, even when it is painful to do so. May God give unto you. Amen. Number two, it was diligent. If you see me today and you are saying this pastor is wala is too much. And like father like I father like so. Guess who got to the office first in his where he worked? 5 30, sis, he's already in, in the office. What are you going to do in the office at six in the morning? But he went to the office anyway. When it was dark, it was always number one to get to the office. Diligent to effort. And yet, refused to prosper in any way other than the godly way. I pray for somebody. The grace to leave a legacy that will shape generations yet unborn. May God give unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three. Let me move faster. The lover of what? So when you see me sponsoring our children here to go, go to school, it's like father like son. For some of you who know my passion, it's education. It's easy for you to get money from me if it has to do with education. But the greatest mistake you can make is come and ask me, I want to do party. I one cobo. <laughs> one cobo you won't get. That's why my elders tell their children, if you want to go to Uncle Shegu, Make sure it has to be connected with education. Otherwise, you are not getting one couple. My father was the first educated man in his family. The first person that went to school in his entire family. He told all the story. He said he just discovered that he doesn't want to be a farmer. Because he was in the village. His father was a farmer. His mother a farmer. His brothers, everybody were farmers. And he said he didn't want to be a farmer. So he ran. He ran to Lagos. He came to the house of an uncle and told the uncle, I want to go to school. And the uncle said, you still go to school, but for now, take. He gave him clipper. He became a barber. And after Bob being here for maybe, I don't know, a year or two, he, said, he ran away again to go and look for another uncle. Now, he didn't come to Lagos to be a Baba. But called the long story short, eventually he went to school. I can't remember what age he started primary one, maybe 14 years or 15 years. Primary one. 14, yeah. He went to primary one at the age of 14. You can imagine, people will be looking at him. Is this one our mate? Or is this one our teacher? <laughs> Pamari one, age 14. But he was determined he wants to go to school. That's why today I'm saying thank you. Thank you, daddy. He was a very prayerful man. Extremely prayerful. Man. He taught me how to pray at the very beginning before I became this Pentecostal. He spent time and time in his prayer room and he would call us together and pray for us and just bless us. And he would tell us why he's praying for us. That he just wants to cover us, to give us the cover of God because he knows there are people who do not want us to succeed. As young as I was, I can't forget. He was a prayerful man. And next, we go back to the sermon. 
Next. It was only. You know, I told you girls are powerful. My father didn't do girls. For all his years that I knew him, I never saw any trace of a man running after women. He, he was completely holy. He did have the opportunity, yes, for somebody in his position. You know, like I told you, he was a very senior civil servant. He just refused to do anything to take advantage of his position. He was holy. Not once did I ever see anything or had anything to suggest that this man was interested in women. He never smoked cigarettes. He never drank the smallest quantity of alcohol. As spotless as you can imagine a human being. He was contented. He didn't look to enjoy life. He was contented with what he had. He could have taken all those gifts. And they were usually very many. Where he chose to be poor. And that's why the memory I have of him the most was one of the those moments when I saw my father in, in a torn singlet. It was painful for me. It was painful for me. But it didn't leave my heart and it didn't leave my brain. That a man who had the opportunity to to leverage his position and, 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 and be rich decided to be poor anyway. And all the money that he could have used for himself, he decided to use it to send us to school. There were four of us, I think, in the university at the same time. And that's why he just couldn't afford it. He couldn't. But he tried his best. He tried his best. Every cover he had, he was ready to release it. So when Apostle Paul said, I fought a good fight, I finished my course. I kept the faith. It reminded me of my father. That this man fought a good fight. He, he did not give up on God. And he did not soil his garment. He kept the faith. By returning all those gifts, he made sure that he was not connected with any fraudulent contractor. You think contractors are stupid? They bring gifts to you, Christmas, Easter, New Year. You, you think they are Father Christmas? Does anybody think they are Father Christmas? Nothing goes for, for nothing. That's why he did not accept those gifts. And the greatest one, at least for me, that, which is where I want to close, you know, in the next five minutes, this man was selfless. As you listen to this sermon today, take one of these things on the screen, or even all of them, and you become a better Christian. When I talk of selflessness, let me explain it. It's beyond just denying himself and, and, and using his money for all of us to go to school. My mother died when I was just nine years old. So I don't even know the love of a mother. I don't know how it feels to have a mother. I don't remember it. 
but my father was father to us and mother to us. He told us, he said, look, children, I can choose to remarry, but for your sakes, I will not remarry. He said to us, he said, look, your mommy died many years now. I can choose to marry another wife. But for your sakes, I'm not marrying you. Because I don't want any woman to maltreat you. And I cannot guarantee you that if I marry again, the woman will treat you like your mother would have. 1978. We forced daddy after I don't know 10 years or 15 years, we forced him. We said, Daddy, please remarry. Please, please marry again. We begged him to marry. So they brought a woman. You know, I said they brought. I don't know if you had that. They brought. Because the man, he, he said he's not marrying. He wants to take care of his children. So some people arranged a woman. And they brought. And we forced him. He married. And I think maybe a few months after, he asked the woman to go. Because he saw the way the woman was treating us. No, not him. He saw the way the woman was treating us. And he asked the woman to leave. That, no, not in his lifetime. Would anybody treat his children like this? I want you to rise on your feet. Life is hard. But being a good Christian is tough. It requires a lot of sacrifice. My daddy died relatively poor. He didn't have a house he can call his own. That he built with his own money. But he died contented. But God does not forget. God does not forget. It might take a long time for the reward to come. But as the Lord leaves, the reward is coming. The Bible tells us, say you to the righteous, you shall be well with them. It may take long for the blessing to come. It may not even come in your lifetime. But as the Lord leave it, the blessing is coming. Is there anyone here who is ready to fight a good fight? You are ready to keep the faith to the very end. Please lift up those hands unto God. And say, Father, here I am. Help me to fight a good fight. You are here this morning. You just want to put your life in the hands of Jesus. Let him carry you. Let him help you. So that you can boldly say, I stayed with the Lord. No matter the cost. So you are here this morning or you are joining us all over the world. You are saying, I'm ready to follow Jesus. I'm ready to give my life to him. Because you know that the reward will come. It may take a long time. It may not even come in your lifetime. The reward may be for your children and your children's children. But the reward is coming. Those of you in front and those that are surrendering your life online, please say after me, my Lord Jesus, I surrender my life unto you. Please save me. Help me. Be the Lord over my life. Thank you, Jesus. 
Amen.